This is Backstage Bay Area, your all-access pass to the local music scene. Now, here's your host, Steve Roby. Welcome to Backstage Bay Area, your all-access pass to the vibrant music scene here in Northern California and beyond. I'm your host, Steve Roby. Today, we're diving into the world of jazz fusion with one of the true masters of the genre, Mike Stern. He's a six-time Grammy nominee, a trailblazing guitarist who's worked with legends like Miles Davis, Jaco Pastorius, and the Brecker Brothers. And he's back with a stunning new album, Echoes and Other Songs. In this episode, Mike joins me to talk about the creative process behind his latest project and his collaborations with top-tier musicians. We'll also hear about his plans for 2025 and get the inside scoop on his upcoming shows at Yoshi's in Oakland. There, he'll perform with a powerhouse lineup that includes Dennis Chambers, Bob Franceschini, Yannick Guizdala, and Lenny Stern. Let's start the show with the title track off the new album, It's Mike Stern on Backstage Bay Area.
That's Echoes. It's Mike Stern on Backstage Bay Area. That's the title track to his new studio album, Echoes and Other Songs. Mike Stern is my guest today. Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you, bro. Thanks for having me. So glad you could be here. It's been about 10 years since we spoke. The last time we did an interview was when you were here in the Bay Area with Eric Johnson. So it's nice to reconnect. Absolutely. Thank you, bro. Yeah. And that was a fun, I remember that gig. That was a fun tour with him. And so very special. Unfortunately, that venue is no longer with us. Flims has gone to the wayside. So oh, one of I know. And I played there for years. I mean, years ago, also with Bob Berg and Dennis Chambers. Yeah. And that was years ago. We played there a few times. Sad that it's gone, but we got Yoshi's. So yeah. that's, that's really great. Let's talk about the new album. Echoes and Other Songs features two distinct lineups of musicians. Can you describe the concept and process of creating this fantastic album? First of all, I'm really glad you liked it. It's amazing. That that means a lot to me. Yeah, I just usually when I'm thinking about doing a record, usually I've got enough music together and maybe even more than I need. And then what I've always gotten together with somebody Actually, in the last bunch of years, it was it's with Jim Beard who produced this record, right. and um, amazing. He was an amazing piano player, amazing musician, just overall, just really incredible and a great writer and produced. Helped me so much mm. with all my stuff. Unfortunately, he died shortly after the, doing the we completed this record, and he was on the road with Steely Dan, who he'd been playing with for ten years. And I got a text from him that it was in the hospital in New York and he had some serious stuff going on. He's gone now, which is really, really tragic. But anybody that is listening, if you can check out any of Jim Beard's music, mm-hmm. sure, of course, I want you to listen to my record because he <laughs> played on it yeah. incredibly. Anything of his also is just amazing. I'm just gorgeous, really beautiful stuff. Did something with the Metropole not too long ago, a 50-piece orchestra from the Netherlands, Mm -hmm. and it's incredible. And Vince Mendoza was the conductor and arranged the stuff. And So anyway, the record has some great players on it, and and it was kind of Jim Beard's idea. And my idea also loosely was figuring out what to do, because I said I wanted to do another record. Of course, I wanted him to help and produce it, and like we've been doing for so many years. And he suggested, since I'd been playing a little bit here and there with Christian McBride, and of course I said, great, we can get Christian McBride. He's a very busy guy. Yeah. And then Antonio Sanchez, Jim had just done something with Antonio Sanchez, some kind of other project, just a, just a recording. He said Antonio just was playing just amazingly great, and which he always does. And I never played but it never hooked up with antonio so oh. i definitely was excited about that and then of course chris potter we'd also i'd done some of those gigs with christian McBride. chris potter was involved in those so i thought that would be a natural guy to get because i the incredible another one of the greatest tenor players ever he's just you know really amazing so i got those guys in gym and then there's some other stuff on there I got that for the first recording. There's some, a little bit, that was really live in the studio, all that, except there's a little bit of overdubs from a great percussionist that, that was, um, and I can never pronounce his name, but it's took by ocean. He's an incredible percussionist that overdubbed some stuff. Sure. Sure. And then I did another session about two weeks after the first one with Guys that I know more, I've played a lot with and recorded with the amazing Richard Bona, who yeah. sings like a bird, and he, incredible bass player, and Dennis Chambers, who be out there in a few couple weeks out there with him. And we've been playing together for years and years, and just a phenomenal drummer. Yeah. And, and it was also with Jim on that second session. And there's some stuff with my wife also. Yeah. And Bob Franceschini is also playing tenor saxophone. He'll be out there with me and Yoshi's. So it was scary for me to, it always is. I always get a little nervous when I'm doing a record. Why is that? It's, it's because it's, it's a lot. You know, you're, you're scared that, to, to you know, you, you hope that everything's going to come out right. And, and you hope everybody likes the music huh. and all that stuff. But we don't really get a chance to rehearse 
either project, you know, I just either, either, um, I, mean, I should say either part of this project, wow. you know, well, with the first session with Christian McBride and Chris Potter yeah, and Antonio okay. Sanchez and Jim, we didn't really rehearse. We rehearsed without Christian. And then on the very last day he had, we just did one rehearsal just with four of us, just me and Chris Potter and, um, Antonio Sanchez and Jim. Mm -hmm. And then Christian was real busy. And then he had time just the very night before we recorded. So we were able, me and Jim and, and Christian got together and ran through everything. Of course, he nailed it right away and all these great ideas for it. I, I did, I didn't, I never liked to write really hard music unless I like to try to keep it uh, interesting, obviously. So it's not, but, but it's not like overwhelmingly difficult. First of all, it makes it a better record usually, especially mm -hmm. if you, all the intricacies go into the solo a lot of times. Of course, I like to write a tune with a lot more harmony, for sure. instance. And there's some of that on this. But mainly, it, there's a lot of room for people to really stretch out without having to get a calculator. Figure out some music. It's a wonderful experience, yeah. Yeah, and they played so great. You mentioned your wife, Lenny contribution to the album. How does her involvement shape the dynamic of your work, both musically and personally? Oh, it's just great. I mean, it always has been. I've always been just checking out what she's doing, mm -hmm. of course, and vice versa, musically. And and she's been going a lot to Africa, and, and she's very adventurous with her music. She's done some stuff back in the early, earlier times when she was doing when she started making records, she was doing some stuff with Iron Bullock and then with Paul Motion, actually, and Larry Willis was playing piano. There's a couple records like that. Yeah. And Wayne Krantz, she started touring with Wayne. They had a project together. It lasted a few years, and she did some recording with that. She's done a bunch. And lately, she's been, the last probably decade, she's really been checking out African music. And wow. so she's got a trio here with some great African music cats that are from Senegal who live in Brooklyn. And anyway, when we were, we used to keep us professional lives and her as much as we could mm -hmm. keep that separate, our marriage and our professional lives and say, well, maybe we should just do, you do your project and I'll do mine. <laughs> and I say, well, we always thought not necessarily seriously, but we thought, well, maybe when we're 70 years old, we'll, we'll start playing together. And that's what we're doing. Yeah. And I wish I'd done it a lot earlier because wow. it works great. She just makes the, she adds more lyricism, which I love in the, in the whole project. And everybody in the band loves what she does. Or, nice. or she plays a little goni, which is on this. She does this on this record. She plays an African instrument, an instrument called it in goni, nice. an apostrophe G O N I. Mm -hmm. and it's from Mali and nice. uh, amazing instrument and she's written a bunch of cool tunes on it but yeah on this record she you know she did some of that as an overdub it's a great color to have and then our live she does a couple we do a couple of her tunes so she sings and then she plays guitar so she plays right. her ass off so <laughs> that's really fun so it's it's been going great great hey i want to play another track off the album what can you share with our listeners about the current single stuff happens what inspired the song and how did you approach its composition? I'm not sure exactly. It was just a bluesy kind of tune, uh -huh. and I wanted a little bit of space, like a, a kind of rhythmic thing where, where it would stop almost. Not quite, but in the tune. A lot of times when I write, it's probably like a lot of people, you just start and it takes on a life mm -hmm. of its own. Mm -hmm. And you, what I always try to do is stay within the tune. I have an idea. And instead of just throwing another idea, which some people like to do, is just put another, almost another tune within the tune and make it work somehow. I like to use part of the original seed of the tune and, yeah. and just use that as what I work with and add stuff to it, but keep the same vibe and sure. the same kind of structure, basic structure. And those guys all play it right. It certainly works well. And let's okay. check it out now. This is Mike Stern with Stuff Happens here on Backstage Bay Area.
You're listening to Backstage Barrio. We're talking with Mike Stern. The new album is Echoes and Other Songs, and that was the latest single, Stuff Happens. Mike, the album feels like a heartfelt tribute to jazz, the guitar, and the joy of playing with a band. You've also dedicated the album to Jim Beard, who you mentioned earlier. From his contribution, what would you like to hope the listeners take away from this tribute? Jim Beard is one of the best musicians. I've, I've, I've been really lucky to play with some badass musicians. And Jim's one of the greatest I've ever played with, is in my estimation. He's just phenomenal. He was phenomenal. He still always will be in my in my heart. But on this record, he also plays a really great solo. That's a group solo, but he leads the way. And it was that's the kind of record it was. When you get everybody at the studio where everybody's playing at the same time, you get all kinds of last minute decisions about the music goes in a certain way that you're not expecting it to. And that's what happened with the children called Crumbles, which is loosely dedicated for, to, that was John Abercrombie's nickname. So I, I named that after him. But the whole record is dedicated to Jim because he was such a great friend of mine and such an amazing musician. And he played his ass off on that particular tune. But he always plays great on whatever he does, whether it's not... But to add some parts to a tune that's what we recorded already, or whether he's playing a live solo, most of his stuff is live. We just do it at the date. He's got his keyboards all set up. He knows he's got a concept. And then he may add some stuff later, which is what we do, how we always made records. And, and this one, there is no exception. But we do as little, you fix a little bit, and you, you add as little as possible just to make sure it strengthens everything. But don't lose a live conversation because there's no other way to get it except if you're all yeah. in the same studio. You can make great music with the drummer doing separate things or the bass player doing it, then an overdub and all. You can make, it definitely works, but it won't have that last, those the last immediate responses that happen yeah. like for, for, during a solo or during the take of the tune. That's so important. Yeah. Yeah, that's so important to me, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Hey, can you talk about the African music gospel and other influences you can hear on the record? It's just an, an amazing joy ride to get into a song and all these other influences are coming right at you. Well, uh, and I guess some of that is from from my wife and from some of that African influence stuff. There's a tune, one of the ones that Richard sings on, he sings on a kind of an R&B tune, Loosely, R&B has still got a very much of an African influence, but it's very loose, kind of inspired by. There's another guy that I'm, I'm having a Joe Biden moment. <laughs> the tune is called I Hope So. And the uh, other one uh, that Richard sang that has uh, him singing so great. There's another tune called Curtis, which is loosely inspired by Curtis Mayfield, but has went to an African kind of sound also. I hear a lot of that. In soul music, that's where a lot of, that's a big similarity in some, some, some yeah. of the African music yeah. that Laney listens to. Even though it's different instruments and different this and that, there's this vibe that comes from that that you hear, of course, in a lot of soul music and a lot of every kind of yeah. music, especially blues and, and jazz and gospel. Yeah. And so that gospel song has got that vibe also. And Richard Bona has really inspired me and encouraged me over the years to go in that direction a little bit. And it was easy because I hear what he's doing. It was easy for me to go in that direction of more African kind of sounding stuff yeah. occasionally on a record because his stuff sounds so fucking great. Excuse me. Excuse my French, I should say. That's another big inspiration for me and for Lady. I was going to play Connections next. But I'm going to let you play, DJ. What song would you like to play off the album? Connections is a good one. It's got okay. the vibe of the beginning, yep. and, and Chris Potter plays his ass off on it. Everybody does, but the, it really has. A, that was the first tune we recorded when, when I did the session with the first session with Christian McBride and, and Chris Potter and, and Antonio Sanchez and me and, and Jim Beard. So you get the idea of the, yeah. of the live context. And then especially with Antonio, he just plays so great behind the solos. It's just so conversational behind everybody. So let's take a listen to Connections now. It's Mike Stern here on Backstage Bay Area. Thank you. 
from Mike Stern, it's Connections on Backstage Area. It's a track from his new album, Echoes and Other Songs. Mike Stern is my guest today. Mike, I'm sure you have some plans and projects lined up for 2025, which is just around the corner. Well, what should your fans watch for? Well, I'm just going to tour off and on behind this record. I'm going to do a few more gigs just hanging in New York because I've mm-hmm. been on the road a lot mm-hmm. this last couple of years, more than I thought it would be. But we'll probably go to Europe at some point this year, at least once for a tour. I'm doing something in Australia. So gigs in New York are, for instance, at Birdland, early February at Birdland in New York, a great jazz club. And that's with Randy Brecker. We'll be doing some of this music. And that's with Randy Brecker and Daryl Jones is playing bass. I got him to figure out when he's free from what that other band he plays with. (laughs) <laughs> the Rolling Stones actually hit the bass whips the stumble. So, so, but he really likes to, we've done some tours together. So he really, he's, well, I, I knew him from playing with Miles. So Daryl can play everything. He's a oh, badass yeah. bass player. And so, so we're, I'm lucky to get him, it, get the exact dates, but it's the beginning of February. Nice. Then we're going to Australia with a, a slightly different band, but Dennis Chambers is also involved in, in both those things. And, in, in uh, and we're playing in Baltimore also at the end of January with Dennis Chambers also and uh, Bob Francis King. And in, in Australia, it's slightly different, but Dennis will be with us. And then uh, Randy Brecker is playing this stuff at Birdland oh, wow. with, uh, with Daniel Jones. I'm going to Brazil in May and Japan in March. So with Richard Bone, actually, and Dennis and my wife. My wife's doing all these gigs with me. Nice. So, we're, we're just doing that now, yeah. and it just works great. So yeah. I got a bunch of stuff coming up, and I'm really grateful to to be able to do this. I never thought I would be able to. I thought I'd be lucky to be a guitar teacher, and I was totally into that. I like to teach. I still do it, but things took a turn, and so the better. Yeah. <laughs> my estimation, in my view, and they definitely, I got just just to play with some astounding musicians, and been able to make records and, yeah. and stuff like that. And this new record company, I just started with them, Mac Avenue. And then they, I've been wanting to be on that label for a while. I was with Concord Records for a while, yeah. for quite a while. Then the contract ended, and then I was looking for another thing, and, and they were interested. I'm really glad to be hooked up with them. They're great. That's you know? great, yeah. Well, let's talk about your live performances coming up at Yoshi's in Oakland. The show features Dennis Chambers. Bob Franceschini. I hope I got his name you right. You got it right, okay. Franceschini. That's and it. Here's That's another it. tongue twister for me. Yannick Guizdala. Yannick Guizdala is an amazing bass player. Lives in L.A. And I haven't played with him for years. We used to play all the time when he was living in New York. Yeah. So this is really going to be fun to hook oh, up right. with him. He's, he's phenomenal. He's another just phenomenal, just great writer and great bass player. Badass. So that's going to be fun. And then my wife, Lainey, who are we leaving out? Me, I guess. Yeah, I'll be there. All right. <laughs> Good reason to come to the show. So anyway, we just wanted to talk about Yoshi's. It's such a legendary venue with deep connections to jazz. How do you feel about performing there again? And what does the venue mean to you as an artist? That's one of my favorite. That's one of every everybody that plays there just is one of their favorite places on the planet to play. And as many places I play, and I, I always think of all of them are good because it's really hard to have a jazz club, organize a jazz festival. It's it's really hard to do. And so I'm my my already my hats off if I were wearing a hat, I would have to take <laughs> it off for for all these guys that that hook that stuff up. But Yoshi's is really special. It's in the Oprah and Yoshi's. I thought that would be great to have that place in San Francisco that they also have. Right, but I, right. I, I thought that was going to be a stretch because they would c- compete with each other. And jazz is very popular, and especially in San Francisco and in a lot of cities. And also, uh, generally a lot of different places, but not as accessible to a lot of people, a lot of, unfortunately. And, yeah. and, uh, and, and so... Uh, it's difficult sometimes to have that many venues sure. uh, with this kind of music. But in San Francisco, it's really hip. It's a hip city, that's for sure. But this that particular place is great. It oh, sounds yeah. great. The sound is the incredible. It sounds great, and the vibe is beautiful. The people there that work there have known a lot of them for a long yeah. time. And some new 
people. It's always cool. And occasionally you hear the rumble from the train going by, which kind of. Oh, happens. yeah. Well, you got to yeah, have one of those. The whole room is shaking. And it's like, wow. You got to have that every so often. You know what I mean? Three, you've got three shows there coming up. Uh, I imagine you'll mix up, mix up the set list and each show will be unique on, on its own. Yes. We're going to change it up. Nice. We might play a couple of tunes, the same tunes, because they're brand new. Yeah. And, but they're all different because the, basically you play this, the tune, especially something like Connections, mm. that you get the tune and then you play the yeah. solo. And that mm. that's always different. So there's a lot of room. So it never gets old. I, that's one great thing about about this kind of music. There's so much uh, spontaneous stuff going on. Right. And that's why I, I love, I remember playing a week with Joe Henderson at the... Mm. And a great tenor player, of course. Really. Yeah. Lived in San Francisco for years. Right. And, uh, and uh, you know, in New York, it, 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 uh, at Blue's Al, at, at, at Blue Note, he played some of the same tunes that he's been playing for years. And every time he played, so during the week, and sometimes it was the same set, so after a whole week. Right. And, and it sounded fresh every turn. Right. It's just, and that's, that's what's great. But we'll, we're going to change it up. For sure, it yeah. puts some different tunes in different sets. And right. It's going to be fun, yeah. Well, let me remind our listeners, Mike Stern and his all-star lineup will perform three shows at Yoshi's in Oakland. His December 16th show starts at 7.30 p.m. And on December 17th, the next day, there are two shows, one at 7.30 and the late show, which is always fun to go to, is 9.30 p.m. You can pick up tickets right now at yoshis.com. Also, stop by MikeStern.org for his music and schedule and much more. There's a whole bunch on your website to check out. Mike, it was such an honor to speak with you again. I wish you much success with a new album and tour, and thanks for stopping by the show today. Man, my pleasure, bro, and thank you for having me. All the best to you. All right. Happy holidays, too. Thanks to you, bro. Backstage Barrier will be right back. Would you like to be a guest on Backstage Sonoma? It's easy. Drop the host an email at backstagesonoma at gmail.com. Now, let's get back to the show. An article accompanying this podcast interview with Mike Stern is also available. The podcast show notes include a link to the article, and you can also listen to the narration now. Echoes resonate. Mike Stern's vibrant journey through jazz fusion. Mike Stern's voice carries a mix of warmth and humility, as he reflects on his latest album, Echoes and Other Songs. A celebrated figure in the world of jazz fusion, Stern joined Backstage Bay Area for a candid conversation about his creative process, his stellar lineup of collaborators, and his upcoming performances at the iconic Yoshi's in Oakland. From the heartfelt tributes embedded in his music to the sheer joy of collaboration, Stern's words paint a vivid picture of an artist who has never stopped evolving. Usually when I'm thinking about doing a record, I've got enough music together and maybe even more than I need, Stern explained when discussing the concept behind Echoes. This time, however, the process was bittersweet. The album was co-produced with his longtime collaborator, Jim Beard, a who passed away shortly after its completion. Jim, he was an amazing piano player, an amazing musician, just overall incredible, Stern shared. It's tragic he's gone, but his contribution to this record is just amazing. The album showcases two distinct lineups of musicians, a concept Stern and Beard devised together. One group includes jazz heavyweights Christian McBride, Antonio Sanchez, and Chris Potter. I was a nervous wreck when I went to the session with all those heavyweights there, Stern admitted with a chuckle. And they just played their asses off, everybody. The other lineup features Stern's longtime collaborators Dennis Chambers, Richard Boner, and Bob Franceschini. These are guys I've played with for years, Stern said. It's always such a joy to get back together with them, and they just bring so much to the music. While the album itself is a triumph, it also carries a deeply personal resonance for Stern. Many tracks were inspired by his own experiences, both joyous and challenging. The song Curtis pays homage to Curtis Mayfield while also in incorporating African influences, something Stern credits to his wife, Lenny, She's been going to Africa a lot, and she's so adventurous with her music, he said. She's really encouraged me to explore that side more. 
Stern also highlighted the track Stuff Happens, describing it as a bluesy kind of tune that took on a life of its own. When I write, I try to stay within the tune, working with the original seed of the idea, he explained, and those guys just played it great. For Stern, collaboration is key. Whether it's with his wife or with the world-class musicians on Echoes, the joy of creating together is at the heart of his artistry. It's always a conversation, he said. When you get everybody in the studio um, playing at the same time, you get all kinds of last-minute decisions that take the music in directions you didn't expect. That's what I love about it. Fans will soon have the chance to experience this spontaneity live when Stern takes the stage at Yoshi's. He'll be joined by Dennis Chambers, Bob Franceschini, Yannick Guizdala and his wife Lainey. Yoshi's is one of my favourite places to play, Stern said. The vibe, the sound, the people, it's all just beautiful. The shows, spanning three performances over two nights, promise a mix of new material from Echoes and beloved tunes from Stern's extensive catalogue. We're going to change it up, he said. This kind of music never gets old because there's so much room for spontaneity, it's always fresh. As 2025 approaches, Stern is preparing for a busy year with plans to tour in Europe, Australia and Japan. But for now, his focus is on sharing echoes and other songs with audiences. Reflecting on his journey, Stern shared his philosophy. I'm going to keep trying with whatever I got. You know I got to. Because I love it, and love means that some days you hate it. Those two sides are on the same coin, but the love is definitely winning out. Through it all, Stern remains as passionate about music as ever. For fans of jazz fusion, Echoes and Other Songs is not just an album. It's a testament to Stern's enduring artistry and an invitation to join him on his continuing journey. Thank you for tuning into the Backstage Bay Area podcast. Don't forget to visit us online at backstagebayarea.com for more insights and stories. Be sure to join us next time for more engaging conversations with local talent and touring musicians. Until then, Keep the music alive and we'll see you backstage.